episode 26 of the Grizzly Knits podcast. I'm Tracy and I'm coming to you from Toronto, Canada. And this is my podcast on my knitting and all the things I'm working on and all the things to do with yarn. So welcome. If you're new, uh, thank you for joining me and trying me out. Um, I hope you stay and subscribe and like what you see. And if you're returning, thank you so much for all your support and your comments and your shares. And it's just amazing. This is an incredible community and I'm very lucky to be part of it. I have lots to talk about today. Um, not a lot of finished objects, but I've been working really hard on things and I want to talk about some things and I've started new things. Um, I have a question and answer period to do later. Uh, I put uh, that on Instagram and asked if you guys had any questions and I got some really nice questions. So I thought it'd be fun to share those. And I got a few goodies in the mail because that's always fun too. <laughs> okay, let's start with uh let's start with what i'm wearing i am wearing my whatever sweater by julie knits in paris i think that's what's called i'll i'll put everything uh everything i talk about i'll write in the description box below and um yeah so this i made earlier in the year i want to say like january february maybe um so i've never worn it as a t-shirt here i'll just stand up just so you can see a little bit and I'm really enjoying it as a t-shirt. It's really comfortable. I thought it was going to be too thick, but it's really nice. Um, it is a really cool pattern. I wouldn't even call it a pattern. It's like a recipe, really. And you kind of just follow how long you like things, um, the neckline you like, the shaping you like, and she kind of gives you the numbers to play with. And it is really good. I really like it. And this, I, I can't remember all my yarns for this, unfortunately. I think it was just like odd balls that I had um, in DK. I do remember this one is the uh, Knit Picks tweed that I love. But um, yeah, and I just kind of faded it into each other. And that's what I'm wearing. So one finished object. I was really hoping I'd have way more than one. <laughs> but I have one. Um, Oh dear, and it's stuck. Hold on. Okay, so this is the Muscle Berg hat. I'm gonna say Berg. There's a big knitters uh, split right now on how you pronounce this. Some say Muscle Berg, some say Muscle Burr, um, but we all know what it is. And um, We Share Needles is having a cow called show your show us your muscles and I will be entering this into that because that's exciting and lots of fun and uh yeah so I'll talk about this a little bit I think I had well I had a different experience than most people most people love this pattern so much they are just making tons and they say it's the best fitting hat ever and I want to say that, but it's not for me. And I think it's because of the yarn I used. So it is a little bit of a hard construction at the beginning. Um, but once you get past that, it is an easy knit. Like you just keep knitting, knitting, knitting. It does feel like you're going on forever because uh, it it's really like long. And then you push this part into it. So the construction is very cool. Um, mine is like... I would say a tiny bit small, unfortunately. It does fit me. I was hoping it'd be for one of my sons, but I don't think it's gonna fit them. And I did an adult medium. So, you know, I'm really guessing it's just what I used. I am a bit of a tight knitter too. Um, I So I used the Stroll Tweed, and um, this is a fingering yate fingering weight and it's the Earl Grey Heather and I have to say this was beautiful yarn like beautiful to work with really soft I just don't think it was a great pair for a Musselberg hat so um I have other yarns I think next time and and there'll be a next time I would do it in one of my hypnotic yarns that I get um which I said I was going to, and then like the last minute I changed my mind and I don't think I made the best decision. Anyway, it's nice, like it's, it is nice. I just, 
and I'll wear it, but um, I don't know. It could be like a bit bigger, I think. Anyway, it's done, so that's good. <laughs> okay, so that's all that's done. <laughs> That's all that's finished. So now I will talk to you about the whips that you have seen. Excuse me. It's very dry today for some reason. Okay. It's actually quite warm here. It's everyone's posting about sweater weather and fall and we're still a little muggy over here in Ontario, but it'll come. And then the snow comes. All right, I'm doing, my first one is just in my little Ikea basket. I'm doing a test knit for Autumn and Indigo, and it is called the Oak Creek Cardigan. And this is what it's like. And that's that, she's the designer, Claire. She's so beautiful. It is a fantastic pattern. Love it so much. Um, I had yarn left over in Melody Drops. It's a worsted weight yarn. It's fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. And I did not have enough to do it all in one color. So I decided to do it in, okay, I don't even have, do I have, I should have the rest of my blue. No, my blue's downstairs. Uh, the cream, the taupe, and the blue. And I did a sleeve and almost finished the body, but I jumped to the sleeve. Okay, so this is it so far. So I, the last time I podcasted, I was here. And this is one of my fall prog progress keepers. So I did all this. And I've stopped because um, I'm going to do the ribbing now. And there was some short rows and I kind of wanted just to get that out of the way. And now I'll go back to do ribbing. And then I decided just to do a sleeve. And I love how the sleeve turned out. I'm very happy with it. And I love her extra long rib cuff. I thought that was really cool. So I have the other sleeve to do the bottom rib and then I have the collar the shawl collar which will be a bit of work to pick up and do so I wanted to do all the trim in the cream but like you know like totally me I didn't even plan out things properly with colors I just dive into things and hope for the best so it turned out that everything is ending in the blue which I'm not mad about, like I like it, it's pretty. So that's fine. So the collar will be in the blue. Um, I think the collar will be in the blue. I hope I have enough yarn. If worse comes to the worst, I will do the collar in one of the other colors, but I think that might look weird with the rib at the bottom. <sighs> I don't know, we'll see. But it's going really well and I'm really liking it. And this is oh, it's gonna be like so fuzzy and warm on like a really freezing evening and I could just wrap myself around this. Like I, I want this to be something I just like wear all the time, you know, because it's so cozy and warm. Anyway, I think that pattern's gonna come out in October, but I will tell you when. And it's a nice pattern, really nice to have. Okay, so that was something I worked on quite a bit. And then I did work on my Bean and Olive sweater by Andrea Mowry. A lot of people are doing this right now. It's so nice to see everyone's colors and versions. And I did, well, here. First, let me show you, and then I'll just quickly talk about the yarns because I've talked about them before. So I finished, I was here last time and I finished that and I um, finished the ribbing and I bound off. And I have to say, this is what I love about knitting. One small thing can make such a difference. I cast it off 
in the other color in like my contrast color and it looks so nice like i like that so this is it so far i'm really happy with it um yeah and then i've just got to do the sleeves i don't know if i'm going to follow her sleeve pattern i haven't really looked at it too much yet um i may do that sleeve a lot of people do where you just knit straight and then do the rapid um decrease i love how that looks it looks so pretty i may do that we shall see so that's coming along and the yarn i'm using is heartland by lion brand i got this at michael's and it is the grand canyon really nice yarn soft and squishy I'm saying squishy a lot today squishy um and then the contrast color is from Pearl Soho. Uh, I think this is their um, teal twilight. And I thought, look, you guys help me with that. I thought it looked nice together. Anyway, so that's going really well. And I, I just want it done. Just want it done so I can cast on other things. So those are things I've been working on. Um, Okay, the third thing I've been working on that you've seen before, I had a few questions if I can talk about it a little bit more. So let me take a drink. And it is my Northeasterly blanket in here. So I'm going to explain. A few people were like, oh, I want to do that, but I don't really understand what you're saying. <laughs> so I'm going to go back and I'm going to explain it better. So I started... First of all, let me show you the picture. I started this blanket um, in fingering weight yarn, and that's what the pattern calls for. Where's the? Oh, here we go. There we go. Really nice, right? So I started doing it, and I wasn't happy with it because I just, I don't know. I just thought, am I? taking me a really long time and am I really going to want this in the end like as a nice squishy blanket I don't I didn't know so I was on Instagram and I came across and I wrote this oh I thought I wrote it down oh I did good okay Olivia and Oliver Fibers she's doing this and it I was like that's brilliant she is she has changed, okay, first of all, she's changed her needle size to a five millimeter. Or did I just change my needle? Okay, let's just go with that. We all changed our size to a five millimeter needle and we're using up scraps. And by scraps, I mean fingering, DK, and worsted. So this is how she's doing it and I copied and this is how I'm doing it. So first of all, I did work on it a little bit. I put in a few more rows. This is where I was last time. I don't think I talked about it last week. So like we're talking probably a month of that. That's not a lot, but it is what it is. Anyway, so what I'm doing is holding together yarns and sometimes not holding together yarns. So I will give an example. Right now, I'm using this yarn, and it's just, okay, this one is a cotton merino, and it's by Concept, and I it's a DK, and I love it, but it's, I always felt like it knit, knit up more of a worsted, so I'm kind of feeling it, oh, that's kind of not too thin, and I'm just knitting it by itself. Then I'll go to, like, I don't even know what this is because we're, we're talking about scraps now. And I'll feel it. Oh, that's kind of thin. I am going to get this fingering scrap and I'm going to hold them together. And that's how I'll use this. So there's no rules. Like you feel your yarn. If it feels like it's thicker, use it by itself. If it feels like it's thinner, put it together with something else. And it's just creating this really nice texture in a blanket, which I'm absolutely loving. 
and some are fuzzy and some are not like it's a true scrap blanket like well i i i'm doing more my colors that i like but you could do whatever you wanted and uh it's just working out really well so i hope that um helps you if you still have any questions please just ask me and i will do my best to answer you and um yeah it's going really well so i'm putting scraps in here and then i'm um, taking scraps out using them for other projects throwing in other things it's just it's just been really fun and really nice like to sit down with this and do a row while i'm watching tv it's really really nice so that is that and then i ca i cast it on two new projects yeah two okay so i am making socks two at a time on 16 inch needles so this is my first time doing this and i am loving it so these are scrap socks i'm making it's all a bit tangly here so these are them so far and you know i don't even some of these like i can recognize this one is cozy posy um in her no cozy posy oh my goodness i'm gonna write it down below you know you say these things week after week after week and then you forget them and um and the rest are just like some of my row one scraps and yeah so I am doing, this is a size 56. It, this is a gift knit for someone who has a size six foot. So pretty small like mine. Well, much bigger than mine actually, but still pretty small. I'm doing um, a sm size small. So 56 stitches. This is just like a plain vanilla sock. I did 20, 20 rounds for the rib, two by two rib. And then I just went into the vanilla and I did 60 rounds. And then I did my favorite, my um, favorite slip stitch heel. And yeah, and now I'm doing the foot part. And I have a progress keeper on here, even though I did, I just, I started them slightly after the last podcast. This is my night one with my little moon um so it started because i was in a bit of a hurry to get these done and socks are taking me a really long time like and then i'm not i don't know i have like not great motivation to do that second sock <laughs> like i know i have to get it done and once i get it done i'm okay but it's like oh okay now i gotta do it again and so i was watching uh amy hi amy i was watching her on um, on her podcast noble character crafts and she always does two at a time now she does magic loop but i thought i've got to like figure this out because it didn't make sense to me always like i think i tried it a long time ago it didn't make sense anyway then the crazy sock lady put out her video on how to do two at a time i rewatched that and click it's like oh goodness it's working and it's magic like I don't know you do it and you're like this is happening so much faster than doing one at a time well at least for me but you're really doing the same thing so it's just a mind game I like mind games I'm, I'm good with mind games anyway I love them I'm happy I'm keeping everything in my fringe bag fringe supply company bag sadly they don't do it anymore but I love it so I've, I've been working on that um and just yeah hoping to get these done real soon and then I'm going to cast on another pair the exact same way you're going to be seeing that a lot on this channel okay then all right you know when you have more than enough projects but then you get an idea and you're like I want to do that now, like right this minute. It happened last night. So my friend got a dog. <laughs> Roll with me here. My friend got a dog. Um, I'll put a picture up. And he is three months. No, he's probably like four months now. And he's very tiny. He's a tiny, tiny little boy. He 
came to her to pounce. And like my dog, you see my dogs. Well, most of you see my dogs. Go on Instagram, you'll see my dogs. And then those of us who zoom, they're they're always wandering in the back. The big guy is 130 pounds and he eats two pounds of food a day. So he eats the same weight as that little dog. Anyway, I'm worried the dog's gonna be cold. <laughs> I think the dog needs a sweater. I think you'd all agree with me, actually. So last night I thought that it's getting, it's gonna be chilly soon, the dog needs a sweater. Yeah, you can buy a sweater, but I'm the dog's aunt. And I don't feel that it's right that I don't knit the dog a sweater. So I went on Ravelry, and there's a lot of people who feel the same way as I do, who are designing dog sweaters. So, but they're, you know what guys, they're complicated. Like a lot of them were very complicated. And I'm like, I, that's not what this, this is about. So I found one I liked called the Pebbles Dog Sweater. And it was a free one. So I can just show you, like, you can't really see much. That That's a Chihuahua. So this dog gained a little weight. So now my friend's dog is five pounds. And we're not sure if he's gonna even be a little bit bigger. So we don't, I don't think he's as skinny as a little Chihuahua. But there's the sweater. And, um, I cast it on, of course. So this is it so far. And my husband's like, what are you, what are you, what are you making? And I said, I'm making Cooper a sweater because Cooper's going to be cold because Cooper weighs like four pounds. So this is it so far. So here's the little turtleneck. Now I showed it to my husband. He's like, I think it's going to be too big for Cooper. So there is a chance that it's going to be too big. So here's the little neck. And then I'm on the body. If you can see that. And then I'm going to be making slits for the legs. And then it's kind of open at the bottom so they can, you know, do their business. I don't know. I've never made a dog sweater before. Either this will be the best idea or the, the stupidest idea that ever had we don't know yet nobody knows oh this is my little my little plant progress keeper looking sharp I thought that looked cute with it anyway we shall see I, it's living in my um home homespun house basket I got a couple of years ago oh and the yarn is, I am loving this yarn okay it's worsted weight chroma twist by knit picks and it's in their Panderosa. I love it. This is how it looks. It's really cool. I think I just bought one ball once just to try it. And I thought I could see me making a whole sweater from this. It's just, it's knitting up really soft. Really, like, look at that. I love that. Um, I don't know what it's made of. Let's see. Superwash wool and 30% nylon. Hmm. Very, very nice. Okay, so in a few weeks, tune in. Did you make a dog sweater? I don't know. I know my friend Karen. Hi, Karen. Um, from, um, oh my goodness, my mind. I want to say not perfectly knitting. That doesn't sound right. I'm going to write her podcast on the bottom. Um, she made a dog sweater a few episodes ago for her dog, Max. I remember the dog's names, but important things I can't remember. Um, and it was so cute, but Max is bigger than this dog. So I could ask her where she got that pattern. We'll see. Anyway, so that's that. And that's all I have been knitting. So let's go into questions now. And then we will go into my few purchases. So I asked on Instagram, any questions you have for me? And I got some really, really thoughtful questions. Number one, what made you decide to make progress keepers and stitch markers? So that's a great question. Um, 11 years ago, 
I started uh, selling my knitting. And at the same time, I started selling jewelry on Etsy. And I loved making jewelry, but it got busy. And I had to kind of decide, was I going to continue making jewelry on Etsy or do my knitting full time? I chose the knitting. I closed down the jewelry business and um, yeah, and everything just kind of stayed in my closet, like all the tools and everything. And then just this past year, um, I love progress keepers and I was buying them and I was like, you know, maybe I should think about making them. And just one thing led to another and I started making them. And it seems like you guys really like them, which is so sweet. And uh, yeah, that's how I started. Okay, what's on your to knit list for winter? This is a really good question. Um, I really don't have one because I, I realize I kind of knit everything all year round. Like I will knit a sweater in July or like a blanket any time of year. I always have socks on the go. So I don't think I have like a real list but I am starting to think about gifts. So I want to make a gift list of things I have in my head for the upcoming holidays because I think that that's going to be pretty big and I really should get started on that instead of knitting a dog sweater, but I'm not. Anyway, okay, first thing you ever knit. I think it's a, it was a sweater. Like most people, normal people knit like scarves and things, but I think I jumped into a sweater. I have an episode, I'll find out which one, where I show you guys my first sweaters and they are absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, they're, I'm glad I kept them. They're from the 80s. <laughs> so tune into that and see the first things I made. Okay, how long have you been married? I have been married 26 years this past June. Um, and to go with that question, where did you meet your hubby? I was in high school. I met him in grade 10. I was in grade 10, he was in grade 12. And I was, uh, I did a lot of theater in school and I was acting in a play and studying my lines in the hall and he, came up to me and asked me if I needed any help studying my lines. And I thought, well, this boy's cute. <laughs> and then we started dating and uh, yeah, it was a long courtship. I don't even know if they use that word anymore um, because we were so young and I got didn't get married till I was 24. So very long, uh, relationship and uh yeah thank goodness that he asked me if i needed help and i said yes because good things came from that moment um back to dating <laughs> favorite weight of yarn this is a good one uh i love i love all yarn <laughs> i think you've noticed that i think all yarn has a place in my heart and in my room um, yeah, I, it's funny because for a long, long time, I really stuck to chunky and especially when I was selling it, because that's what, uh, you can knit fast. And then I thought people were crazy knitting with 2.2 millimeter needles or 2.5 millimeter needles and tiny little fingering weight yarn. And I thought that is crazy. I will never do that. And I love it. I love, I, I'm even thinking of lace now. Like I, I love all weights of yarn, so I couldn't really pick one. Um, favorite needles that I can pick because I'm very picky. I will, I will show you what I like. They're on most of my projects. Uh, they're the like, likey L Y K K E needles. Someone said I, I had to say it and now I forget. I'm sorry. Um, so they're bamboo. And they're my favorite. I have tried everything that everybody like loves. And I always go back to these guys. So they are definitely my favorite. I don't know. They just feel so good in my hands. And um, yeah, like I, I'm even looking at the dog sweater. I've got them on there too. I love them. Uh, okay. And um, well, this was just nice. <laughs> the question was, why are you so sweet? 
That was like such a sweet question. Um, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm glad you think I'm sweet. That's really important to me. I love making people happy. Um, yeah, I just love, I think that's why I love doing this, connecting with you guys. And, um, I, I like thinking of others and just, I don't know, just bringing out positive energy to you guys and to hopefully the people I'm around as well. So those are the questions. Thank you so much. I love them. Um, okay. Now I'm going to do a little shop tour and then I'll show you what I bought. So if you want to stick around for that, that would be great. So I recently came out with my fall collection of my progress keepers and stitch markers. So I'm just going to quickly show them to you. And um, you guys have been amazing. Honestly, the support I get from these and the sharing and oh, I love seeing them on your projects. They are just so sweet. So this was the most popular one. And this one's called Give Them Pumpkin to Talk About. And that looks so great on people's fall projects. This one is my little crow one. I just called to say I love you. And these are all semi-precious stones. Um, and they all come with one progress keeper and one and three stitch markers. But the progress keeper this time I did differently and they can be used as a stitch marker as well. And this one is my Raven Moon. So there's a little, oops, let me just put this down. There's a little Raven there. Um, and this one is called Autumn is my favorite color. And it's a little hard to see, but there's um, a little maple leaf right there. And some pretty autumn colors. Last one, I will never ghost you. I thought I'd be hip with the name of that one. <laughs> I had to ask me, my daughter what that means. <laughs> okay, so those are all in the shop. I think most of them I'll just keep till probably October. Um, and, you know, the end of October. And then um, in November, beginning of November, I'll be coming out with my, um, my holiday collections, which I'm planning right now. Okay, nail, not a ton, but a little. All right. Um, I was watching a podcast and I saw this company that I didn't know about, Billy and Ba, and they make um, knitting goodies. Oh, I just noticed that. That's really sweet. So I got a few things and I got a few extra things to put in my 1000 subscriber giveaway. I'm not there yet, <laughs> um, but I'm really close. So I'm starting to, you know, gather some things for that. So, but I'll just show you them because I bought one for myself and then I thought they're really cool. Okay, so these really caught my eye. They are magnetic uh, pattern placeholders. So I'm not sure, do I even have one? Oh, I may. Do I have one? Oh no, okay, I thought I had one. So it's really just, um, you know, it's just magnetic and you just put it on the side of your paper and move. I know a lot of people don't use paper anymore that you use your iPad or your phone, but I use paper. So if you use paper, they're really cute and they're really good. I got the size small. Um, I kind of wish I got the larger one. So maybe next time I'll do that. So I got one to put in the, uh, in the prize pack. These I thought were so cute. They are little macaron, um, stitch containers and the little light bulb stitches that we all need and love. They fit in here really well. So you know what, it's just something to keep together, to keep your things together and throw in your bag. And I thought they were very cute. And then the last thing are these really cool sticky notes and they're trackers. 
So you can see it says like rows and repeats and then just little circles and then you can, you know, tick off. I'm also a big like, um, when I do a lot of writing on my patterns and then I, I even make little circles like that and then tick, like that's how my brain works. So I thought these were really great. So yeah, and I got an extra one to put in that prize pack as well. So that was one thing that came. Another thing that came was my yarn ball. I won't go into it too much because um, I'm usually the last to get it in Canada, but it's still super fast. But a lot of my American friends already got it and talked about it on their podcast. Um, and my friend Bobby Lee from um, Knitting Inspired Podcast, she does her own um, unboxing. So, you know, check that out. But I'll just quickly, it's just so adorable. This theme, the theme this month were sloths. How cute are these? These are um, paper clips. We've got a little air freshener. Just put in a car. Might go to my son, just saying. Um, and a little like baggies. But the yarn, oh, this was my favorite. This was my favorite. Look at the colors. Just absolutely stunning. I don't even know where I want this on my body. <laughs> a hat, a cowl, a shawl, socks. I don't know, but it's gorgeous. So that was that. And what else? Oh, and the last thing, speaking of Bobby from Inspired Knitting Podcast. Hi, Bobby. Um, she was talking about Pip and Pin. Um who is Canadian and she has a, um, a Patreon that you can subscribe to and you get little goodies from that, um, which looks amazing. Or a subscription, like a monthly mini subscription. So I wanted to try out her monthly mini subscription because she does all Canadian dyers. And I thought that is an amazing way for me to learn about other Canadian dyers that I might wanna try. So this, so I got my September um, one and just oh, look at these colors. Like if that's not fall, I don't know what is. So, okay, I brought glasses because I knew, I knew I was going to have issues. Okay. So she has two from uh, Rocky Mountain Yarn Co., these are super soft. So they're, I wrote this down. I think they're 20, are they 20 gram minis? I think they're 20 gram minis. Um, this one's in their Thunderbird. They're, they're fingering weight. Just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this one is from Things Created Equal Basic Sock and the color is Daddy's Corduroy. That's perfect. Oh, this one is a beautiful one by Sweet Weed Fiber Co. in their Sweet Pea Sock Base, Dark Chocolate. Okay, this is the other one from Rocky Mountain Yarn Co. in their Banff Sock Base. And this is Phoenix. Which one did I miss? I feel like I missed this one. Yeah. Rocky Mountain Yarn Co. in their Banff base and Thunderbird. So this is how they look together. And I mean, it's just really beautiful. So I'm so excited to use them. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking a cowl of some sort with color work, maybe? That'd be really pretty. Or maybe a hat. Somewhere up here. Not down there. Not on my feet because they're just oh, so pretty though they'd be beautiful socks too wouldn't they okay we're going to think about that anyway i was very happy with that so okay one other thing oh, these are magnifiers and it's i can't i can't see when from far away i can i can't see when things are far away might be time for bifocals but we'll that's another episode okay one last thing 
I found um, a new podcast that I'm enjoying so much that I just wanted to share it with you, but you probably have seen it already. But, and I don't know where I've been that I haven't seen it already, but um, her name is Fernanda and her podcast is Little Monkeys and Me. She's in the United States and um, she is amazing. Like her knitting, I don't know how she fast this woman knits. Like the, you have to watch her last episode, like her newest episode. I think it's episode 11. The, the finished objects just, they just keep coming and coming. And it's like, oh my goodness. Um, and they're all beautiful. Um, she's a beautiful knitter. Um, she seems like a real sweet soul. I really like her. And uh, I like as well that she uses a mixture of, um, affordable yarns like from Michael's or well she's in the states so Joann's and Hobby Lobby and you know the big box stores and she loves hand dyed and uses those as well so uh give her a um a little check out because I think she I think you'll like her and that's it wow this is a big episode for someone who has one finished object anyway I hope everyone is doing really well and um, I will see you in a few weeks. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm Grizzly Knits. And um, leave a comment. Just let me know how you're doing. And uh, I love when you guys tell me what you're working on. It sounds so amazing. And that's it. And hopefully, maybe by next time, we'll have the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.